that stuff. Sit on down. Sit on down. Oh, my God. Glad all your pretty people are here. Today, we got a good comedian. He's a great comedian. Please give it up for Mr. J. Washington, y'all. Give it up. Y'all can do better than that. Give me a little more energy here, y'all. Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Yeah. Oh, shit. Y'all can sit down. Y'all got me feeling like I'm on an auction block the way y'all was standing up. Like, y'all finna bid on a nigga this thick. I got 250 for them shoulders. <laughs> I've never been in a setup this nice. This shit look better than some apartments. God damn. This rug is beautiful. Like, what is this, Target? All right. <laughs> I don't know if y'all heard, but they recently made Juneteenth a federal holiday. No, no, yeah, that shit, no, not at all. That is not a good thing because them making Juneteenth a holiday is another example of black people asking for one thing and they do another, you know what I'm saying? Like black people asked for the police to stop shooting niggas like they was playing Nintendo's Duck Hunt. And then they was like, we'll give you a federal holiday. No, nigga, y'all gave us some shit that was on a Saturday. Niggas weren't even off work yet, you know what I'm saying? That part, right. Thank you for the person in the back who co-signed it. That part. I don't want shit like that. That's like sitting there saying we want people to stop racially profiling black women's hair in the office. Well, how about we take Aunt Jemima off the pancake label? I don't give a shit about that. As long as you don't change the fucking formula to the recipe because that shit's delicious, nigga. Leave that alone. I, would, I don't want that to happen. I didn't want that to happen because I got worried about companies that start pandering to shit. Like, y'all know about companies that pander through pride and shit. They help us like, we got a rainbow full of flavors. No, you don't. <laughs> like, the last thing I wanted to see is Ikea having a sale talking about some, come get our old cotton mattresses three-fifths off. Nigga, no! <laughs> I don't see that shit. <laughs> no! <laughs> talking about some, you don't want these sales to be left hanging? Shut the fuck up! <laughs> be terrified got the Popeye's chicken lady telling us them try new oil and strips straight from Juneteenth get this bitch off my screen <laughs> this shit has been crazy through this whole panorama we going through I swear to God <laughs> like I said it's been hard for black dudes police shoot niggas like they playing Grand Theft Auto <laughs> yeah you know what it's like <laughs> that's a nigga that play Grand Theft Auto a lot he was like yeah I just shot niggas like what <laughs> it's rough for black dudes like I was at Target the other day Target, I'm bougie right and uh, I was shopping and I was in the cereal aisle because I was going to get some cereal because they had my almond milk trying to be healthy right and I look down into the, the cereal aisle and I see another black man down there look like he making his decision he perplexed it look like it's a lot of his heart he's stressed out so I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna be a good black man. Go down to his brother, put my arm around him and console him, let him know it's gonna be all right. Cause this nigga was about to buy two family sized boxes of Captain Crunch with no milk. Uh, I don't know if you know what that means. He didn't gave the fuck up on life altogether, okay? He don't care about shit. If you get Captain Crunch with no milk, you want to die. Do you understand how dry that shit'll scratch up? And then some of y'all might be like, well, Jay, what if he got babies? Then I should call DCFS on this nigga, okay? Because he don't give a shit about the roofs of none of those babies' mouths. You know what I'm saying? All they shit shredded up looking like big league fucking chew. <laughs> Better get them babies some kicks. <laughs> Shit has been rough through this whole parallelogram, I swear to God. I swear to God. Especially as a parent. I'm a parent, round of applause, you got kids in here? That was the most scattered amount of applause for kids ever. Y'all was like, nigga, we didn't want to talk about these babies, that's why we're here. I got two. I got a 17-year-old and a 7-year-old. My kids are 10 years apart. Which, if you don't know the math, how that works, it means that uh, I should have not pulled out and went raw a hell of a lot sooner. Uh, <laughs> which makes me think of a question real quick. Why is it when dudes say they have kids, somebody always want to go, well, I guess your pullout game ain't that good. It's quite the opposite. 
Fellas, have you ever visited someplace where when you walk in the doors, it's all warm and tingly and inviting? It comforts you and embraces you, and it just makes your spirit feel like it wants to explode and pop from the inside? I've been to that place twice and Disneyland, nigga. What is you talking about? I love my babies. <laughs> but my daughter's getting ready to go back to school, and I'm cool with it except for one thing. Like, I don't want to buy nothing off her goddamn school supply list. Like, I don't know if you've seen a child's school supply list in 2021, but it's fucking ridiculous, okay? There's shit on there that a child shouldn't have, like six packs of pens. What the fuck does an eight-year-old need with six packs of pens? You know what I'm saying? I called that teacher, was like, why is it these many pens for my little child? She was like, well, this is in case little Timmy and his mama can't afford to buy pens. Then your daughter can help supply the whole class. I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool. Can I file little Timmy on my taxes? She was like, no. Well, fuck that nigga and his mama, okay? They better figure this shit the fuck out <laughs> six packs of pens like eight reams of paper pencils and everything but the dumbest shit on the child school supply list today are two items a protractor and a compass oh y'all don't know what a compass is that thing you used to use to make a perfect fucking circle nobody ever made a perfect circle with that you know what I'm saying you took a plate or a bowl to make a perfect fucking circle ain't nobody using a compass in 2021 you know who the only people using a compass in 2021 a pirate and a pilot okay and my daughter ain't flying no planes or taking over no fucking ships <laughs> nobody had a compass and used it what it was for you never did you know what you did with the compass? You took the pencil out, threw the shit out of the way, and started stabbing the fuck out your friends with the pointy end. You was just teasing the fuck out of them, just stabbing the shit out of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now I got to worry about getting a call from my daughter's school talking about, so Mr. Washington, we got a problem with Jalea. What's wrong? She stabbed somebody. What? With scissors? No, with the compass. Well, it's your motherfucking fault for having her on school supply list. <laughs> Blame me for this shit. I think we as society are getting dumber by the day. Dumb as fuck. I don't know if y'all heard this, but uh, police in Kansas had to tell their residents to please stop shooting at the tornadoes. <laughs> I'm gonna say it again for those that didn't catch on in the back. The police in Kansas had to tell their residents to please stop shooting at the tornadoes. What in the hillbilly fuck, okay? Do you understand the level of white privilege you got to have to think it's okay to shoot at a fucking tornado? But I was trying to figure out what would make them do that. So I smoked a lot of weed and uh, had an epiphany. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, Kansas hillbillies, they saw something real tall and dark moving real fast and was like, them niggers in the air. It just started shooting. <laughs> It's Tornado Tyrone. <laughs> I thought the NBA draft was in June. <laughs> Fucking dumb. Police in Alabama had to go on Facebook and tell lay residents, please stop flushing your drugs down the toilet because you are creating meth gators. I'm going to say this one more again for those that didn't catch on. The police in Alabama had to go on God's gift of Facebook on Beyonce's internet and tell their residents, stop flushing your drugs down the toilet because you were creating meth gators, okay? Not now gators, not later gators, fucking meth gators. Alligators themselves are already fucking terrifying. Do you know what's more terrifying than a regular alligator? No, one that tells you if you hook him up, he'll suck your dick. That is horrifying, nigga. That is horrifying. <laughs> Nobody wants a Jones and alligator walking up to him, scratching his neck, telling him, I got these cheeseburgers. <laughs> and the nigga that had the cheeseburgers. <laughs> My biggest question with that story, though, is... Who the fuck figured out the Gators was on mess? <laughs> what cop in Alabama was on patrol walking down the street saw an alligator was like, hold on for a second. Come here, goddammit. Oh, your skin don't feel right, something wrong. Open your mouth. Open your fucking mouth. And count your goddamn teeth. One. 
one, <laughs> one. I think this gator's on meth. Like, who the fuck? Figures out this dumb shit. I have to deal with it as a bigger dude. I get it. I'm a bigger dude and I scare people. You know what I'm saying? But when you look at me, I'm really a fucking teddy bear. You know what I'm saying? I'm all nice and cuddly. All this cute shit. And I say that because the other day I scared the hell out of an old white man in the bathroom of a Starbucks and it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fucking fault. Here's what happened. He went to the bathroom. I didn't know he was in there. I opened up the door to the bathroom. He turned around and saw me and every level of fear came over his fucking face, okay? Like six generations of racist shit he said at holiday dinners had come back to haunt him. Like every single episode of Oz and MSNBC's lockdown he's ever watched was about to come to fruition. Like his worst fear of running into a big black guy in a small fucking space was about to happen because he just stood there shook with his dick in his hand, scared to him. I don't want to do it. Like I just had to look at him with the softest and calmest voice thinking, I'm sorry, sir, let me close this door. Because I don't need you thinking no shit like that for to go down. <laughs> so after he finally come out the bathroom, right, I go in and come back out. When I get out, I see him standing at the counter, ordering his coffee, shaking his shit, telling him, can I get a small sing in the calf? He takes his coffee and go and sits in the corner by the window, sipping slow, looking outside at the sunset, crying like this is the fucking notebook. Talking about the big black guy's gonna fuck me in the bathroom. <laughs> Sir, I am not about to butt fuck you in the bathroom of a Starbucks, okay? <laughs> Would you like to know why? I am a gold level member here, okay? Do you know how much caffeine I got to drink to keep at least 125 stars on this goddamn card to get my access to mocha, scuff, scones, muffins, and all this good shit? If I'm gonna fuck up rewards for reparations, it's gonna be rewards I don't give a shit about, like CVS, Walgreens, JCPenney. I may try to bum rush you in the sporting goods aisle of a Coles, but I'm not about to fuck up these beautiful rewards trying to get revenge in the bathroom of a Starbucks, sir. Your booty is safe another week. The strawberry lemonade just came back out. Shit's wild through this whole parallelogram. It's wild. I got friends now who everybody is ethically non-monogamous, you know what I'm saying? They polyamorous and they, they got fucking different people and everything. And they're like, yo, Jay, you should try that. I was like, I can't. My ego get bruised too quick, you know what I'm saying? I got friends who were married, they were swingers. They used to have parties at the crib and they would, before they would have a party, they would throw us out. They was like, all right, y'all got to go. We got people coming over. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna go set up the audio and the video real quick in the basement. They was like, ain't no audio or video set up. I was like, that's what you think, okay. <laughs> But they ended up getting divorced. They got divorced and the wife left him for one of the niggas they were swinging with. Do you know how much that's fucked up? This nigga has already sampled the goods. All he gotta do is learn how to get into her heart and he got it made. This nigga gotta come back over his old house and watch him come downstairs in his robe talking about something, you want something out the kitchen? Nigga, no! I can't do it. I can't do it. Because I can't think of my girl getting fucked by somebody else while I'm there. But fellas, if you ask your guys that, what's the first thing they say? Well, nigga, you get to get some other pussy too. Ain't as good as it sounds. Check this out. Let's say me and my girl, we decide to go to a swingers club together. We're going to fucking ride or die for this. High five, bitch. Let's go, right? She doing her thing, getting worked out by some dude. Now, I'm over here giving some chick the old Wayne Dang Doodle. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving her a good stroke like this. I'm thinking I'm putting in work. I'm doing my job. But now my peripheral, I hear this bitch make a guttural sound she ain't never fucking made in life, okay? I think I'm putting in work, all of a sudden I just hear, ugh, bitch, ugh, what the fuck is ugh? Now this nigga mad at me like, hey man, you gonna let me finish? Nigga, mind your business. She looking at me, talking about some, can we continue this between me and her right now? Okay, let me handle this. I'm mad as shit, talking about some, ugh. We got the most awkward fucking drive home, you know what I'm saying? She by the window smiling, cheesing and shit. I'm driving with the windows rolled up and the heat on, angry as fuck. Like, ugh, bitch. Ugh. Bitch, I swear to God, I'll find a late night Target and buy two family-sized boxes of Captain Crunch and kill the both of us in this motherfucker. I swear to God, I will. Hey, y'all have been great. I'm Jay Watson. I'm out of here, y'all.
This has been a Funny Media Group production.